If serial killers could speak from beyond the grave, would they be willing to talk to us? My name is Julie McDonald. I'm an investigative journalist. And I'm Bobby Marqueso, an ex-cop and psychic medium. And together, we aim to have a conversation with a serial killer. He was looking for sexual arousal. We had never had anything like it. The shit has hit the fan. We're crazy because this place is haunted. Oh, God. This is where boys did not want to come. Oh, my God, we're at 12 degrees. There. What was that? Oh, my God, look it. It just went off. Zero degrees. The crimes themselves were perfect crimes. Are you Albert DeSalvo? Albert DeSalvo was the genuine Boston Strangler. I don't want you here. Between 1962 and 1964, 13 women were murdered in the Boston area. They varied in age from 19 to 75. All had been sexually assaulted, all had been strangled, and all of them had let the killer willingly into their homes. Albert DeSalvo admitted to the murder of all 13 women whilst incarcerated on a separate charge of over 300 counts of rape. He would later become known as the Boston Strangler. Our investigation into the sinister world of one of America's most infamous serial killers will seek to explore the legend behind these evil crimes and the macabre legacy that still haunts the hearts and minds of Boston citizens. The Boston Strangler had a unique psychodynamic running in what he did. I believe with all my heart, Albert DeSalvo was incapable of remorse. Albert DeSalvo was the Boston Strangler. He's dead, but his name lives on. We aim to uncover paranormal evidence surrounding this infamously brutal killer and speak to him from the other side. We will investigate the vicious, regimented reform school where DeSalvo spent his teenage years. Burlington County Prison, the place where he was incarcerated for the first time. Before holding a seance of a different kind at the very apartment where he committed one of his most horrific murders. A notorious show-off and bragger, some believe Albert DeSalvo simply invented his role in the Boston Strangler murders. Others don't doubt that he committed each and every sadistic murder. Will a conversation with this serial killer unveil the dark truth behind these crimes? Albert DeSalvo was born on the 3rd of September, 1931. Raised in the poor working class suburbs of Chelsea, Massachusetts, he was the product of a violent and abusive childhood. He had a simply dreadful childhood. Father beat them regularly, and he taught them all how to steal. So De Salvo was in many ways in training to be the Boston Strangler. The adolescent De Salvo quickly and easily fell into a life of petty crime. After repeated arrests for burglary and assault, he was sent away to the Lyman Reform School for Boys. And it's here that our paranormal investigation begins. Bobby, I've brought you here to the Lyman Reform School for Boys because Albert DeSalvo spent quite a considerable part of his teenage years here. He came here originally on assault and battery charge. Albert learned a little bit of what he knew committing crimes from some of the boys that were here. I think he was certainly adding to what his father had taught him. So I guess this is important to us to see whether maybe it intensified DeSalvo's criminality. Right, yeah, and that's, I think, hopefully some of the, the questions that we'll get answered tonight when we go inside. Let's check it out. Okay. To help build a picture of what life was like at this tough reform school, I have arranged to meet Richard Johnson, a pupil at the school during the same period as DeSalvo. Do you have happy memories of being here, Richard? 
Well, it brings back some memories. There are rumors of horrible things happening at Lyman School. Corporal punishment was allowed. Did they mind it? Was there, was there any sort of fear of it, or was it just something that happened daily at the school? There was no discipline to anybody unless they did something wrong. This school taught people to live a disciplined life. And that was obviously a struggle for some people. Really. Yeah, apparently with Albert, didn't, didn't utilize the tools as well as you seem to have. So we're going to take a look downstairs? Yes. Excellent. Okay, let's do Lead the way. So you're standing on the floor of the skating rink. In that window behind you was the most gigantic loudspeaker that you can imagine playing roller skating rink music. And we did what people of the 50s did. The Saturday night entertainment was here at the roller skating rink. How many was that? A couple hundred boys on this roller skating rink. Really crowded. This is Oak Cottage, the Discipline Cottage. The mood was uh, pretty grim. We know that Albert de Salvo would have come here because he was also a returnee, so he would actually have spent some time at Oak That's Cottage. True. Yes. And if he misbehaved, he would have a very bad time here. Our investigation into one of the most infamous men in Boston's lengthy history will begin here at the Lyman Reform School for Boys. You will not hurt us. No. Oh my God, look at it. It just went off. Zero degrees. This was where boys did not want to come. Albert DeSalvo admitted to the brutal rape and murder of 13 women in 1960s Boston. The crimes came as a genuine shock to the city. It, beyond description, really, they were, they were terrorizing. In our effort to speak to the spirit of DeSalvo, the investigation has brought us here to the Lyman Reform School for Boys. This is the place where DeSalvo learned to master his criminal art. As night fell, this felt like the perfect location to begin the paranormal part of our journey. Is there anything that I need to be aware of? If you should go off by yourself, you're on your own. Um, just try to protect yourself as best you can. They're not allowed to mess with you. They need to be really assertive. You need to tell them, stop it. We've already heard from even the campus guards that we're crazy because this place is haunted. Let's get in there. Let's do it. Bobby was certain that this place was paranormally active. I just hoped that we would find enough evidence to prove him right. spend some time back in that corner. I just want to hit some of the, the harder energy spots right now. You know, okay. we could sit in here certainly and try to create noise and, and things like that, but I think most of our luck is going to happen down the stairs. But I do want to check out this corner okay. just to, it. it's kind of a residual. I see right about here is where I'm starting to feel energy. You want to raise the vibration a little bit? Mm-hmm. Let's try to provoke a little bit, okay? I'm gonna come up on this stage. And this is where performances would come in. That's is there good. anybody here? Hello? Oh, did you hear that? No. Hello? Hello? It's right there, standing right inside there. Hello? Don't be nervous. Um, Where do you downstairs. want to go next? Downstairs. I would need more than a few knocks in an abandoned building to convince me. But Bobby felt focused, and so we moved on down to the former roller rink. A lot of times what happens is energies, when they're getting ready to manifest, they draw a lot. That's why it gets colder. That's pretty cold down here. I brought the thermometer, but it would have to be really freezing. I want to go back. Hello?
Hello? Start giving us a sign that you're here. You want to be acknowledged, and that's what we're trying to do. It's starting to get colder. The baseline temperature was 45, and I'm at 39 right here. Hold on for a second. Just calm down. Uh. I just don't even like this room. Oh my God. What? Oh my God, we're at 12 degrees. Look at that thing going crazy. Yeah, yeah, I do, I see it, I see it. Look at it, 12. If you're in here, please give us a sign. And it's not nine degrees in here. Come on, you gotta do better than this. You gotta make some kind of a noise. You're manifesting yourself. Do it, make a noise. Are you Albert DeSalvo? Did you know Albert DeSalvo? Oh, I just got a big pressure One degree. in my ear. Six degrees. I just got a big pressure change in my ear right, That's right here. That's another sign, and then look at this. Oh my God, look at, it just went off. It just went to, to couldn't measure it. Look at it, zero degrees. Are you Albert DeSalvo? I mean. 22, 25 degrees. It went all the way to zeros. Right back down again. register look, the look, temperature. Look, look. Come on, man, you gotta do better than this. Make this thing go off. I want you to try to make this, this light up red. Pressure change in your ear is a huge sign that they're right next it's to you. It's going down again. That's it, manifest, use that energy. Touch one of us, brush up against us or tap us on the shoulder. Can you use the energy of my voice and manifest yourself? There he goes, look at that, down to one degree. Manifest yourself. Can you make a noise? Come on, manifest that energy some more. Use that energy. Let's go. He's trying to manifest himself, so that's why the temperature's going crazy all the way from zeros up to 15, down to minus four. Did something just land on my head? Uh -oh. You just feel tapping on your head? Mm. Is it wet? Can you say something for me? A final time before we get going. There. Again? Can you do that again for me? Oh, that's awesome. Awesome. Can you make another noise and talk to me? It's an unusual echo, isn't it? Speak again. Come on, one final sign before we take off. What? I do have. Ah. ah. I just saw a face right up there where that, right just about in that area where the stairs are. What kind of face? Just a face. Just a face. It, was too fa it was too fast. It was too fast to see. One, uh, one last sign, come on, before we go. Say something or do something. I think we've got a one trick pony on our yeah, hands, something. haven't we? We got some really good, we got some good evidence though with the, with the thermometer, this thing lighting up. But then I wanna go next door, because I found a way to get in. And I want to just see real quick what energy, I mean, I'm not looking forward to it, but. Are you suggesting going into the oak house? Mm -hmm. The one that's all abandoned? That's right. Let's get out of here. I feel such strong energies come from this building that I want to go in and see what this is. This was known as the Discipline Cottage. And, um, when I went around back, I found an open window earlier, and I want to go in and see what's in there. This was where boys did not want to come. Yeah. Okay. Cool. 
go. Who's here? Hello? I'm inviting you to say hello. You can do that in a number of ways. You will not hurt us. Over there. Where? Back in that corner. OK, I can hear that. When I first walked in here, there were noise coming back from that corner. Okay. I'm not comfortable turning my back. Okay, don't say that, because that scares me. Come on, let us know that you're here. Just make a noise. What spirit or entity is here? Oh, the room just feels dark and heavy anyway. Yeah. I mean, he's standing here, anyway. here, even though the building is obviously abandoned now. We know that DeSalvo spent time here as well. I'm just getting a tiny little sample right. of the energy that's here. Right, that's what I wanted you to feel. Like, this is a part of his life that, that everything was just kind of brewing and waiting for the right kind of trigger. And whatever it was that triggered him to go and kill, brutally, murder, those women started here. Just as Bobby mentions De Savo's presence, what could be described as an orb passes behind both Bobby and I. Some believe that an orb is allegedly the beginnings of a spirit manifestation. Could this be a sign from the Boston Strangler? They have to, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm getting more, more um, of that, uh, of the ominous, the, all of the misery, all of the dread, the fear, the terror, and I mean, I'm not, to tell you the truth, I'm not even interested in finding out if there's anybody here anymore. I need to, I mean, it's all, it's, it's kind of just enveloping me, you know what I mean? It's just really making me uncomfortable and I just kind of want to just get away from here because again, I think that there's more than just these boys or whoever is here. I think there's more than that than almost what we experience next door. And I okay, don't, well, let's not hang around. No, I don't like it. I feel like I've gained a little bit more insight into the mindset of Albert DeSalvo having been at the Lyman School for Boys. The temperature gauge started to, to go crazy and Bobby and I often disagree about one degree here or there but in fact this went kind of crazy almost as if it was broken. I know for a fact that it wasn't. I saw it with my own eyes. I don't really know what to say about that other than it was strange. I felt as if I had been touched Looking back, was that just because I was imagining what was going on with the temperature gauge and Bobby saying, the spirit's here, it's, it's near you. It's, it's really difficult to say in hindsight. The events of the night before had been compelling, but the Boston Strangler had so far remained elusive. Last night at the Lyman School was pretty lively, wasn't it? When you're getting that uncomfortable feeling, combined with the personal experiences that we were having, I would definitely say there's activity there. Well, I would go as far as to say I was actually quite frightened when we went in there, when the sun had gone down, it was pitch dark, deadly silent. And when we were in that, that back room, we were seeing a change of, you know, 20, 30 degrees in a matter of seconds. Right. When an entity is going to manifest, it draws energy from the air, creating cold spots. Because we were just keeping it steady, and the temperature was moving itself. That's energy moving all in and around, the whole room. Sometimes you see these things out of the corner of your eye and it makes you look and then you just see it for a blink. Remember the building next to it was called the Discipline Cottage. I mean, it was oh, just so emotional. I, I just thought that was terrifying, that place. And I, I didn't want to stay there. I didn't need a full body apparition. Yeah. I just didn't want to be there. It was important and I think very necessary that we got out when we did. I think maybe we need to pinpoint a time later in his life and go ahead and do some investigating around that and see what we can find out. Yeah. Albert de Salvo joined the army at the age of 17 and was stationed in Germany. Army life was good for him. He married a local girl and for a while, he seemed to be heading in the right direction, but it wasn't to last. Reposted back to America at Fort Dix, New Jersey, Albert once again crossed paths with the law. He had molested a young child while he was in the army. 
and he was identified and was going to be prosecuted. DeSalvo was held at the Burlington County Prison. The predator had been caught, caged like an animal behind bars. This prison was the next stop on our journey. As the investigation moved forward into darker territory, would we uncover the truth about the Boston Strangler? Oh, God. Someday. Uh, someday. What was that? Who's here? Can you just make another noise for us? She wants to know what the f you're doing here. Our paranormal investigation into the life and crimes of the Boston Strangler had already produced interesting results. The next stage of our journey took us to the ominous Burlington County Prison. So, Abby, this rather dark, grey-looking building is the Burlington County Prison, and I brought you here because I think it could be a really important place in getting to know Albert DeSalvo. Mm. When he was a young man, he was incarcerated here on a sexual assault charge on a minor. But I think what's going to be interesting in here is what sort of a man that he was. Do you think, in a way, that while he was here, he was becoming the Boston Strangler? I think so. I think this is a pivotal point, what I can feel already into the investigation, that this was kind of a pinnacle of turning, making some decisions and deciding to go forward with it. And I, I can't wait to get inside and, and investigate a little bit more. Burlington County Prison was built in 1811. It became home to some of society's worst criminals. Finally closed in 1965, the prison has become famous for its dark, lengthy history of executions and murder, and equally for its paranormal activity. Paranormal investigators South Jersey Ghost Research have come to help us with our investigation. So tell me what you know of about the actual activity that's taken place in here. We've had objects move and relocate. We've had motion sensor alarms going off inside cells that are completely closed off and you can't have access to. Sounds like we could have a really active night. Yeah. As night fell, our investigation could begin. Heading straight downstairs, Bobby immediately detected a spirit presence. But was this DeSalvo? So if there's anybody, if there's anybody here, okay. Can you say hi for us? Can you just tell me what your name is, please? Can you just make some kind of a noise or a sign? Your suggestion is that he's around here. What was that? Hello? Can you do that again? Feelings like right in back of me. Well, let's walk down the corridor just a little bit. If there's somebody here, can you make a noise now and just let us know that you're here? What's your name? Are you here? Just got my ears got a little. You now you get a pressure change. Mm -hmm. It's almost like I'm hearing over in here. Oh gosh, you give me a heart attack. <laughs> Who is it? Who's here? I didn't hear. Come closer. Can you hear that? No. No idea. It's almost like over by that chair in the table. Almost like that chair creaking if it's if you sat down on it. See? You heard it that time? Yeah, I just can't make out what it is. I can't make it. Who's here? See? Oh. I just kind of shivered down my back. All right. Onwards and upwards. Okay. Oh. Who's, hello? Hey, can you, can you just talk to us for a second? Don't be shy. Just, skin crawl, just that normal feeling. Ah, 
Right here? Yeah. Hello? Did you get any sense of who? In the bathroom. Mm -mm. In here? Did you hear that? Yes, I did. Hello? I'm not getting as strong down here as I was back here. Ah, it's safe right in there. Okay. Hello? Let's go in. No, hang on. No? Who's here? Can you can you talk to me for just a second? She's got kind of a mouth on her. She wants to know what the f we're doing here. Let me go stand in there. Okay, you want me to stay here? Yeah. Can you just make another noise for us? I can feel you here. I know you're here. I just heard in my ear whispering, I don't want you here. Help. Why were you in prison here? Did you kill somebody? She's laughing at that. I don't think she killed anybody. I don't think that's working. Right, let's go up and spend a Should we leave her to it? Yeah. At that point, one of the paranormal team believed that they recorded an EVP. They feel that this is in response to a question that Bobby had just asked. Hello? An alleged method of spirit communication, electronic voice phenomena picks up sounds otherwise undetected by the human ear. When someone's asking a question, you see the spikes in the sine wave, and then you normally go flat. I saw a jump after you asked that question, no one had said anything. Now this is really amplified, it's still got a lot of noise and I have right. to clean it up a little bit, but I hear um, you are ordering us around. You keep ordering us around, that's what I hear. Gosh, it's so and that's a definite female voice. Yeah. That's brilliant. Awesome. Even I buy that. That's pretty clear. That's very clear. It's especially given what the impressions he was getting, the two go together pretty nicely. Encouraged by this turn of events, Bobby decided he needed to spend some time alone, locked in DeSable's prison cell. Make sure you've got the key. You sure you want me to shut this one too? Well, I have to be completely isolated. I want to know what it was like. Yeah. It's a complete isolation. This is what it was like. There may be other spirits or energies in here. I'm particularly looking to talk with Albert DeSalvo. Albert, if you still inhabit this cell or visit this cell, could you please tell me now? Right over my left shoulder. Strong presence. I definitely feel the residual energy part. I can see him here. But there was, it seems like there was just some decision making here. There was a time when he was thinking of molesting more girls. He's trying to figure out how he can make his crime more heinous so that he would even up himself a notch on the notoriety scale. It's almost like he's yelling out to, uh, you know what he's saying? Like, uh, yeah, you wait, someday, uh, someday. Yeah, I'm gonna be known, I'm gonna be known. He's, he's yelling this out. I got the pins and needles now, I got the skin crawling. In fact, you have to build up your energy a lot to invoke some of these energies. Who's here? Come on, make a noise, make a sound. Let me know that you're in here. Who is it? Bobby's time was up, and I wanted to see what he'd discovered while alone into Savile's cell. I hear footsteps. I think they're coming for me now. <sighs> so what happened? I, um, I felt the presence in here, definitely. 
Do you think it was him? I th you know, there's two different people I was feeling. One was a bit stronger, and he was like more over in the corner. It's almost like the same type of feeling he was putting out of not wanting to be discovered. So he doesn't want to talk to you in case he gives away the fact that... I've not has. felt that we were alone in this place. I wonder if in a way this place intensified his potential to be a vicious, violent criminal. The molestation charge against De Salvo was eventually dropped and he escaped a lengthy prison sentence. It turned out that the parents were reluctant to have the children go through it. The army was going to f phase them out of the area, transfer them. So everybody ended up happy. De Salvo was free to return to the familiar streets of Boston. Almost immediately, he combined a series of bizarre sexual offenses with burglary. As the measuring man, he went around to apartments, knocked on doors, told women that he represented some new advertising agency and that he had spotted them. And out would come the tape and he would start measuring. And uh, a lot of them would stand there and be measured. Some of them would just stand there and, until they realized that it was a charade and he was gone. He was never charged with sexual assault, but Albert de Salvo was sentenced to 18 months in prison for burglary. It was after this incarceration that he committed the crimes that would make him infamous. When he came out of prison from, from the measuring man, he became the strangler. This woman was murdered, strangled out in the back bay. Within the next week or two, two more women were murdered, and then a fourth. And uh, they were strangled. Each one was strangled. People were frightened. They simply were. They were terrified. With an insatiable sexual appetite to feed, simply measuring women for cheap thrills was no longer enough. De Salvo had to kill. Hello, man. I'm the maintenance man. Here to fix your plumbing. De Salvo conned his way into unsuspecting women's apartments. Yes. These uh, poor ladies, they didn't have a chance. He was that confident. Each theme was the same. To get the woman partially unconscious, then to kill her, and then to leave her positioned in a way that would be quite shocking. The women had foreign objects, such as a, a, a bottle or something inserted in their vaginas. His purpose was to have access to the woman's body. He would play with it, kiss it, study it. He'd look for something to wrap around their neck so that if they started to come to, he could grab it. Then he'd pull too hard and he'd kill them. De Salvo eventually went on to brutally rape and murder 13 women. Our search for the spirit of Albert De Salvo leads us away from New Jersey and into the heart of Boston. I had arranged to meet up with Bill McDonough, a messenger boy in downtown Boston during the time of the murders. Bill was going to show us a location important to our investigation, the place where the Boston Strangler committed his first murder. On the left is uh, 77 uh, Gainsborough Road, and this was the uh, house of Anna Slessers, who was the first victim of the Boston Strangler. Did you get any sense of what went on here, Bobby, or how yeah. Albert may have approached the apartment? Yeah, I think prior to this, he's thought about killing before. Um, just never went that far. He was just kind of waiting for an opportunity. I see him walking these streets, and this was a, such an impulsive thing. Um, you know, he was just, like I say, it's just a, an excitement and a, and, a, and a giddiness. So when you say that, do you mean that when he went into this building, murder was what was on his mind? He was thinking this was going to be it, and he was ramping himself up because I'm starting to feel an exhilaration. The, the easiest way that he found that he could kill her was by choking her. I think that was almost a, a last-minute thought. Making his way across the street this way, and constantly... He's constantly looking back at the, at the door. It's weird, because it's almost like, he, I feel like when I'm looking back, like he almost doesn't believe she's dead. I mean, he knew she was dead, but when I get the feeling like I'm looking back to make sure that she's not watching me out the window, you know, like she's watching where I'm going. And then he, he comes over here and he's, he's looking up and he's, you know, then I feel like I want to run. It's just euphoric and it's hurried and it's, it's exhilarating. 
The Boston Strangler's horrific murder spree had led us to the scene of his most horrendous killing. But what would we discover when we investigated behind these four walls? So you enjoyed raping these women? With what we learned from Bill earlier, it seems the only way we're going to have the conversation we're after is to go back to the scene of his crime. How you died? Our investigation into Albert de Salvo had revealed that in life he was more than willing to tell the world about his gruesome crimes. But would he be so open and detailed in death? After being imprisoned on multiple rape charges, de Salvo, already facing many years behind bars, finally confessed to being the Boston Strangler. He wanted to tell his story. And that was part of the deal he was trying to work out that some big magazine or news company would pay him. In jail, de Salvo was an arrogant man who thought highly of himself and would often anger the other inmates. In the end, this arrogance would be his downfall. He was irritating with other prisoners, and he was stabbed to death in prison in his cell. It's very difficult to explain, isn't it, in the dead of night? As our journey into the dark and sinister world of the Boston Strangler came to an end, we were concluding the investigation at the apartment that was the scene of his most horrific murder. Would the spirit of DeSalvo finally make an appearance? We were about to find out. Would the emotion that still exists in this place because of the gruesome happenings, could they bring Albert DeSalvo forward? When you, whenever you have an event like this, this brings about so much emotion, especially from both parties, victim and, and you know, predator then, yeah, I mean, it's a really likely place that, that Albert could make himself known tonight. Let's go and take a look. So, yeah. I had invited along members of the Massachusetts Paranormal Crossroads. This was the apartment block where Patricia Bissett was murdered by the Boston Strangler. We're more than likely sitting in the room where she lost her life. Unfortunately, we have you guys here to kind of help us here. In fact, we're going to use something a bit different. These guys have a very unique tool that I can't wait to see how it works. There's a number of these devices out there that investigators use, and the idea behind them is that they do random sweeps of radio waves, and that spirits are able to use those words that are out there, pull them together to form sentences. And maybe I can work with that, um, and we can get some of the answers we're looking for from hopefully Albert DeSalvo himself. So I guess one of the first things we're, we're trying to ask is, can the spirit tell us, are you here? Can you tell us what your name is? First, can you just tell us that you're here? Yes. I took that as a yes. I don't think that's stretching it. Does everybody agree? Yes. And she's so strong right here. So speaking to the female energy that's in here, are you still here? I heard yes. Is there a male trying to get in contact with us? No. So maybe the male's coming through strong, even though I'm feeling the female. Maybe I'm just feeling her because she's right here. All other spirits that are trying to use this box to communicate, please stop. We're only interested in Albert DeSalvo and Patricia if she's here. So, Patricia, are you still in the room? Okay. Wow. <laughs> What do you think of being in the same room with Albert DeSalvo? What? Death, death, yeah. Conflict of interest. Yeah, makes sense. That would totally make sense, wouldn't it? If you're on the other side with your killer, it's a conflict of interest. Patricia, say hi to us. Can you just say hi or hello if you're in the room with us? So then, Patricia, we very much want to talk to you. Can you tell us how you died? Albert DeSalvo. You have to say at least hi or hello so that we know that you're even here. Hi. Did you hear it? Oh, I didn't hear it. I'm sorry. I didn't even hear it. Yeah, I really. I was there. Wow. Albert, did you kill any of the women that were victims of the Boston Strangler. Of course. Being so obsessed with sex, 
Is that what drove you to murder Albert? Making money. Money. And making money? Well, at the end, I mean, he wanted to sell his story. So you enjoyed raping these women, Al? Yeah. Your legacy is a footnote in history as a creep. It was years ago. Things don't change, Albert. Your name today is just as disgusting as it was back then. Nobody looks at you like a hero. Was prison life worth all of the pain and fear that you caused? Albert, how were you murdered? Stabbed. Stabbed? You heard? Yeah. Oh, but we didn't hear that clearly. How were you murdered? Stabbed. Stabbed. I heard it. Albert, were you or were you not the Boston yeah. Strangler? It's not like that. It's not like that. We know that you're a murderer, we know that you're a pervert, and we think that you are the Boston Strangler. Really? <laughs> really? <laughs> Think about goodbye. it. Saying goodbye? Yeah. <laughs> Just before I turn this off, he says, saying goodbye. Saying goodbye. <laughs> it's very hard to be conclusive about the Franks box because those people who use it professionally aren't always convinced. But it was certainly pretty interesting. But as we went to turn it off, Bobby and one other member of the group thought that they heard different things. Um, I think Bobby thought he heard, think about it. One of the other guys, heard goodbye, I suppose that would be a neat way to end it. I'm, I'm not entirely sure that either of those was correct, but it was certainly something new, something interesting. Did it add all that much? I'm not really sure. As the new dawn broke over the Boston skyline, it marked an end to our journey. The events of last night were exciting. Albert, did you kill any of the women that were victims of the Boston Strangler? <laughs> but had we had a conversation with a serial killer, the evidence was compelling. Think about it. Saying goodbye? Perhaps we did give Albert DeSavo the attention he craved. <laughs>